Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya O my Lord, the all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. Purport Vasudeva means to Krishna, the son of Vasudeva. As by chanting the name of Krishna, Vasudeva, one can achieve all the good results of charity, austerity, and penances. So by the chanting of this mantra, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya, it is to be understood that the author or the speaker or any one of the readers of Srimad Bhagavatam is offering respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Lord Krishna, the reservoir of all pleasure. In the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, <clears throat> the principles of creation are described, and as such, the first canto can be called creation. Similarly, in the second canto, the post-creation cosmic manifestation is described. The different planetary systems are described in the second canto as different parts of the universal body of the Lord. For this reason, the second canto can be called the Cosmic Manifestation. There are ten chapters in the second canto, and in these ten chapters, the purpose of Srimad Bhagavatam and the different symptoms of this purpose are narrated. In the first chapter, the glories of chanting are described and the process of meditation on the universal form of the Lord by the neophyte devotee is hinted. In the first verse, Sukadeva Goswami replies to the questions of Maharaj Parikshit, who ask him about one's duties at the point of his death. Maharaj Parikshit was glad to receive Sukadeva Goswami. <clears throat> and he was proud of being a descendant of Arjuna, the intimate friend of Krishna. Personally, he was very humble and meek, but he expressed his gladness that Lord Krishna was very kind to the sons of Pandus, or his grandfathers, especially his own grandfather Arjuna. And because Lord Krishna is always pleased with his family, Therefore, at the verge of Maharaj Parikshit's death, Sukadeva Goswami was sent to help him in the process of self-realization. Maharaj Parikshit was a devotee of Lord Krishna from his childhood, so he had natural affection for Krishna, and Sukadeva Goswami could understand his devotion to Lord Krishna. Therefore, he welcomed the questions about his duty. Because the king hinted that worship of Lord Krishna is the ultimate function of every living entity, Sukadeva Goswami welcomed the suggestion and said, Because you have raised questions about Krishna, your question is most glorious. The translation of the first verse is as follows. Text 1 Sri Sukha Uvacha Variyan Eshate Prasna Krito Loka Hitam Ripa Atma Vit Sam Ata Pum Sam Srotavya Dishu Ya Para Sri Sukadeva Goswami's translation. Sri Sukadeva Goswami said, My dear king, your question is glorious because it is very beneficial to all kinds of people. To hear the answer to this question is the prime subject matter of hearing and is approved by all transcendentalists. Even the very question is so nice that it is the best subject matter for hearing. Simply by such questioning and hearing, 
one can achieve the highest perfectional stage of life. Because Lord Krishna is the original Supreme Person, any question about Him is original and perfect. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that the highest perfection of life is to achieve transcendental loving service of Krishna. Because questions and answers about Krishna elevate one to that transcendental position. The questions of Maharaj Pariksit about Krishna philosophy are greatly glorified. Maharaj Pariksit wanted to absorb his mind completely in Krishna. And such absorption can be effected simply by hearing about the uncommon activities of Krishna. For instance, in the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that simply by understanding the transcendental nature of Lord Krishna's appearance, disappearance, and activities, one can immediately return back to home, back to Godhead, and never come back to this miserable condition of material existence. It is very auspicious, therefore, to hear always about Krishna. So Maharaj Parikshit requested Sukadeva Goswami to narrate the activities of Krishna so that he could engage his mind in Krishna. The activities of Krishna are non-different from himself. As long as one is engaged in hearing such transcendental activities of Krishna, he remains aloof from the conditional life of material existence. The topics of Lord Krishna are so auspicious that they purify the speaker, the hearer, and the inquirer. They are compared to the Ganges waters, which flow from the toe of Lord Krishna. Wherever the Ganges waters go, they purify the land and the person who bathes in them. Similarly, Krishna Katha, or the topics of Krishna, are so pure that wherever they are spoken, the place, the hearer, the inquirer, the speaker, and all concerned become purified.